Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I have some very bullish news to share with you all. I want to share what my Q4 ideal scenario is for the crypto market and the respective catalyst that could send the market rallying and we hit new all-time highs. We also have news of a billionaire who has just revealed he has owned Bitcoin for the past three years. All the whales, all the institutional players have packed their bags. They are ready for new all-time highs. And we have a big update around AMC theaters. We know they're going to be accepting Bitcoin. Well, now they're accepting other cryptocurrencies. And this is going to be launching Q4. Uh, Flare, if you're an XRP holder and you participated in the Flare snapshot, the Songbird tokens are about to be distributed. So I'm very curious what the price is going to be. So we want, I want to break this down for you guys. And we have Mark Cuban weighing in on crypto regulations. And we also have a big update around Hedera Hashgraph, HBAR. Um, as you guys know, I have that in my portfolio. So lots to go through. We're going to break it down. Before we do, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, this video is brought to you by OKCoin Crypto Exchange, where you can buy, sell, and trade your favorite cryptocurrencies, and you don't have to pay high fees. And you can also, guys, stake your crypto and keep 100% of the rewards. You don't have to pay any fees. So be sure to sign up at OKCoin, link in the description. All right, guys, what are three main catalysts that I believe could send the market roaring to new all-time highs? Well, I tweeted about it today. And if you don't follow me on Twitter, please do, link in the description. So here's what I tweeted. Ideal bullish scenario for Q4 that will send the market into a massive bull run. First up, SEC approves multiple Bitcoin ETFs. I do think there's a strong chance. Now, once again, it's not 100% certainty or guarantee because Gary Gensler is a, is a bit of a, a crazy guy right now when it comes to crypto, but the pressure from the institutional players, the fact that other countries have launched ETFs, right? Canada, and Brazil, Europe. Um, and what they, might happen, the US may see capital leave the United States and go to those ETFs. And I don't think they want that. So I think, I think we might see an approval, guys, and I'm hoping we do. Fingers crossed. Second, Ripple wins the lawsuit and XRP is relisted on exchanges, also giving the clarity to the rest of the crypto market. Now, it won't be full clarity, but rather the other crypto uh, companies can also use the fair notice defense, right? And say, hey, the SEC didn't tell us anything. We, we're just operating just like Ripple and Ethereum and so forth, right? Um, so I do believe Ripple is going to win. So I'm hoping this happens in Q4. Uh, third, Congress passes uh, crypto regulations. Maybe the Token Taxonomy Act or the Securities Clarity Act gets passed. I, I hope so, guys. And even if one of these things just happen, I think it's still bullish for the entire market. I think the biggest catalyst is that Bitcoin ETF. Um, if you haven't seen my interview, I uploaded with Gabor Gerbox from where Van Eck, guys. Van Eck, I'm getting you these interviews. These guys have filed for a Bitcoin ETF. They've been in business since like 1950 something. This the Bannock is a powerhouse, right? Well-known brand. Uh, they know what they're doing. And Gabor Garbox is the director of digital asset strategy. We talk about the Bitcoin ETF, why it's important. So I'll put a link in the description if you haven't seen that interview. But guys, I believe that uh, you know this, this, if a Bitcoin ETF gets approved more than one for sure, we're gonna see a lot of capital come into the market because it eliminates the risk of holding the coins directly. And, and I'm talking about it, it, pensions and insurance companies and retirement funds, right? They're gonna be able to participate without having to worry. They're gonna have the insurance, assurance, security and the white glove service. Um, here at Crypto Burb, who is a well-known um, technical analyst and trader uh, tweeted the following, and it's interesting. He said, biggest alt season with largest pumps ever seen, late Q4, market calendars, I'm certain. So the technical analysis is showing that um, we could see a skyrocket up. So I'm, um, I'm excited about that. Um, and he, oh, sorry, he, he tweeted the following, you know, clown time. Let's go to the comment section and hear from our experts. <laughs> so, uh, you know, because people are probably going to try to troll him, of course. But I do believe, guys, we have a second leg in this bull market. That's another bull run uh, per the stock to flow model and other macro level charts. 
Um, here's some very, very bullish news. Founder of Interactive Brokers, $360 billion of assets under management, owns Bitcoin for three years. Thomas Peterfy, um, let me play the clip here. He revealed this. It was It's pretty amazing because we haven't heard anything from him before on owning Bitcoin. And you don't want to not be exposed to that, right? So that's the story. I, I have had Bitcoin for three years in my portfolio. Valuable. Heard what he just said? I've had Bitcoin in uh, for three years in my portfolio. So go back three years. Where were we? In the bear market. See when he, uh, that's pretty much when he accumulated along with the other smart money. While people were running, af uh, being afraid when there's blood on the streets, these guys were buying the dip, buying the bear market, buy low, sell high. That's how you make money, right? Every asset class has a uh, boom and bust cycles, bubble cycles, right? Look at real estate, look at stocks for my goodness, metal, precious metals, gold, and so forth. Um, you have to catch it at the right time. And uh, we are on the side of smart money. We're here early. We're still early in the, in the adoption curve. And you got to have a macro level long-term view. So very bullish, guys. These billionaires are buying up Bitcoin and crypto. I hope you see what's happening here. All right, check this out. Laos uh, to legalize mining and trading of Bitcoin. It's happening around the globe. This is amazing. Here's a quote. With a hydropower potential of 26.5 gigawatts, Laos is one of the most hydropower resource-rich countries in Southeast Asia, which is ideal for profitable and sustainable Bitcoin mining. Remember the news items we talked about where power plants in the United States have been mining uh, Bitcoin and other cryptos with their excess energy, and it's helped them to be more profitable? What do you think these smaller countries who probably have low GDP, their currencies, uh, the base and hyper, hyperinflation, they're going to move to mining, guys. And uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin has a hard cap. It's deflationary. Um, it's predictable. We know how much is mined every day and what the respective algorithm is going to allow to be put out into the market. And then you have the halving cycles at every four years where the supply gets cut. So uh, this is just so bullish. And some of you may say, well, I hate Bitcoin. Bitcoin uses a lot of electricity. It doesn't matter how you feel. What matters is what is happening in the world, the reality of the situation. This, this is why you can't invest with your emotions. I'm here to make money. I hold Bitcoin. I believe Bitcoin's going to do well, but I hold altcoins. I believe certain altcoins are going to do well. I have XRP, Hedera Hashgrab, HBAR, Ethereum, Chainlink, VeChain. So just make sure you have a macro level view, a 360 view. You don't have tunnel vision and you're not getting involved with your emotions when it comes to investing and hating this coin and that coin. That, that's a waste of time. At the end of the day, this market's going to come to a maturation where this, you're not going to be able to make the same type of money that you can now. So make the money, whether it's big with Bitcoin or all coins. Uh, and we know Bitcoin leads the market. It's the rising tide that lives all boats. So we need Bitcoin to do well. It's getting adoption and all coins will follow. You want an example of that? AMC said they're going to add Ethereum and Litecoin to year-end crypto adoption plans. Now, remember, they came out about a month ago and said, hey, we're, we're going to support Bitcoin. Now, they're adding all coins. And it's Ethereum and Litecoin. And guess what? They're going to add others, guys. This is why patience is so important. So the cinema operator has expanded its plans to accept crypto payments for movie tickets with the inclusion of Ether and Litecoin. This is bullish. Um, as things open back up, and then remember, game theory and Metcalf's law are going to play out here. Competitors, other folks are going to notice this, and they're going to start accepting as well. So I'm so bullish on the future of this market, and it's not because of my feelings or emotions. It's because of what I see being built, the investment, the expansions, the acquisitions, and so forth. Now, XRP holders, those of you who participated in the Flare snapshot, uh, the Songbird SGB token is about to be distributed. Uh, this is exciting, guys. I I've been waiting, and I know many of you have as well. They tweeted the following, putting Songbird in flight. Let me give you the details. So Songbird has now launched, and the SGB token has been distributed to all addresses. Um, our, it looks like 
let me make sure I give you guys the right information here. This document briefly describes the path that the network will take over the coming months and weeks and months. Observation mode. Songbird is currently in what we term observation mode. The FTSO uh, contracts will be deployed during observation mode and the FTSO system will commence. Observation mode is intended to allow exchanges, FTSO data providers, and uh, developers to deploy on the network in a safe manner. During this period, the network may be rolled back and or the redeployed from Genesis. Succinct, succinctly, oh my goodness, I can't say that word today. This means one, node peering with uh, the network is achieved through whitelist. Two, Flare reserves uh, the right to roll back and slash or take down the network and restart from Genesis. Exchanges, we strongly advise not making SGB token available for sale or purchase during this time. So TLDR, distribution of the tokens have been sent. They're saying, let us crawl, walk, and run. Do not put it for sale. Do not release it yet, right? Because they want to test the network. And I understand that. But I'm glad after much delays, they're finally making progress here. And I'm ready to get my SGV tokens, guys, because remember the snapshot was in December 2020, right? If you participated at that point in, in, in with either self-custodying or you went to an exchange that supported it, right? Coinbase, Uphold, and so forth, and you were part of the snapshot, you will get your distribution. Now, the distribution is TBD, obviously, because they they have to test this network. So um, I'm very curious what the price is going to be. Guys, this is free money in a sense, right? It, it's, it's a hard fork, if you want to call it that. And uh, we're going to get the SGV tokens. And I'm hoping if it can go to man, do you see even 50 cents or a dollar? <laughs> I'm going to be very happy, as I'm sure many of you. Once again, it depends how much XRP you have. And you guys know XRP is my number one holding. So <laughs> I'm excited and um, I'm certainly going to take some profits. I'm going to hold some long term and see, you know, what the potential of, of what the uh, tokens price would be. So I, I don't want to sell all of it at once because it's not like I need the money right away. Now, if you need money right away, do what you got to do. Everybody's financial situation is different. And I would never say don't take profit. Some people who tell you that are being ridiculous. If you need money and, and you're cashing out at a, at a, at a, at a, um, on a sense of profit, right? You're getting, you're making a return on your investment, then you're good. If you're selling at a loss, then I would say don't do that. Have have a macro level view, right? And hold and uh, unless you are in some detrimental financial situation that you absolutely have to sell at a loss. So, uh, but long story short, guys, it's progress being made here. The tokens are coming soon. Let's see. Uh, let let them do their testing. Get the network going, and then let's see what the price is. <laughs> uh, it's going to be fun. All right, speaking of XRP and Ripple, Charles Gasparino, uh, this man has been doing a lot of reporting here, and I love it. Once again, we talked about it. He's exposing the SEC because you see the SEC, Gary Genser is on some bullshit. If you want to call it that, I'll be real with you guys. Um, so he said the following, as I continue to report, what's fascinating about the SEC enforcement on Ripple and Coinbase is the feds are giving these outlets, which have embraced regulatory dialogue, more scrutiny than they gave Bernie Madoff. <laughs> Every industry needs regulations, but this is a degree of overkill. There you go. We're not saying we don't want regulations. We understand there's scammers out there. But look, I've seen BitConnect, right? Many of you who are here in the market, uh, but going back to 2017, saw BitConnect and what it did. So we need, we need policing to stop the scammers, but we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We don't want overreach. We don't want draconian laws. We want smart and intelligent uh, uh, regulations that is also uh, these regulators need to work with the companies, right? Because this is all new for everybody and we need to figure things out. Um, we, we can't do regulation by enforcement. That is ridiculous. Put the rules out, put the law out and then enforce it. You can't just go around enforcing things and say, oh, you should have known better because, you know, blah, 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 blah. It, that's just stupid. Um, and I'm glad Charles is doing this. And I, I once again, I think this is a spark to have other media 
uh, outlets and journalists uh, step in. So he also said the following, legal sources tell Fox Business the next year will be crucial to cryptocurrency regulation. SEC enforcement cases against Ripple and possibly Coinbase, GOP lawmakers now asking Gary Gensler to provide some uniform framework for his regulation and whether uh, regulation by enforcement is appropriate. Jay Clayton's decision to sue Ripple may have been staff decision, but staff will have to explain key differences between Ripple XRP and Ethereum, which has escaped regulatory scrutiny thanks to John uh, Deaton's lawsuit, Get Popcorn Ready. Oh, I'm ready. I think a lot of people are going to get exposed here. Will any of them go to jail? Probably not. You know, uh, obviously, I think we know Jay Clayton and William Hinman's conflicts of interest and corruption. But, um, you know, we know how this works. They're not going to uh, maybe they get a slap on the wrist, but nobody's going to jail here. Right. Just like the, the 2008 crash. Hardly anybody went to jail. That's because. The government officials, like I said, Genser, they're in bed with these banksters, man. It's it's all a rigged game. Now, I'm not saying that to be like all doom and gloom, like, oh, this whole thing should be burned down or something. But that's a big part of what's happening and why, you know, there's an uh, overarching uh, problem of why people feel unrepresented by their representatives and the government, right? Why people don't trust government. And this is not like a left or right issue. This is everybody. And it, it manifests itself in different ways in different, different political parties. But at the end of the day, I think people come together and realize, hey, we're all being screwed by uh, businesses being able to buy politicians and regulators. I think we will all be to arm in arm, like angry at the government, but they divide us with political party stuff and all that, right? Uh, but I digress. <laughs> Let me get off my soapbox. Um, but I think we're seeing some of that here, guys. It's trickling into the crypto market. And like I said, Genser is a Goldman Sachs guy. He's trying to keep the establishment, the bankster cartel, the bank banking cartel. So I hope this um, media scrutiny and pressure uh, Genser is getting pressure now from crypto companies and uh, other regulators, people in Congress, reporters. This is what we want. Even you guys, that, that, that's why I keep saying make videos, tweet, send messages, send emails, make phone calls, let your voices be heard because we know Genser is already ignoring the 30,000 signatures from XRP holders, right? They're not even paying attention to it. And yet they're supposed to represent the people. Now, guys, uh, this is interesting. Judy Shelton, who I'm trying to get an interview with, and she's a monetary uh, economic, uh, economist, excuse me. Um, she's actually said positive things about uh, XRP and, and, and uh, Ripple and so forth. Uh, she responded to Brian Armstrong, CEO of Coinbase, by saying, I have a plan, Brian Armstrong. So what does she have a plan for? Well, Brian tweeted the following. If fiat backed stable coins really become inflation coins, not so stable, then how will we get a coin that is truly stable? This goes back to uh, you, you, the questions I've always asked people when they come on the channel for interviews. Will they continue the money printing with the digital dollar CBDC? Yes, they will, <laughs> right? They can't stop printing, guys. Um, perhaps something that tracks a basket of real world goods purchasing power parity using Oracle's ideas welcome. So this is interesting. And uh, Judy said, I have a plan. Hmm. Uh, man, I want to interview her to talk about that. Mark Cuban, who we know has beaten the SEC in a lawsuit, is, is been calling out the SEC for proper crypto regulations. He had some things to say here, some of which I agree, some of which I don't. So he says, any discussion of crypto regulation has to start with the facts that there are already laws against fraud and that crypto is not monolithic. There are many layers to crypto here, and my thoughts and all are subject to change as I learn more. I like that he put that there. Like, this is not how it is or must be. He's trying to learn. So one, stable coins will be the first to get regulated. Why? The variance in the definition by product. What is a peg? What is an algorithm, algorithmic stable coin? Is it stable? Do buyers understand what risks are? It needs standards. Two, smart contracts are more, more, most likely source of fraud. Hmm. are the most likely source of fraud, intentional omissions, undisclosed actions, lack of clarity by users. I don't think, uh, I guess this stands for stable coins, 
will need to be approved first. Oh no, excuse me. I don't think smart contracts will need to be approved first. I think they will be reported for fraud and will need cert certified audits to prove lack of fraudulent intent. And that's okay. I agree with that. Like if a smart contract company comes out, you know, I, I will I would be first to admit I'm not that technically savvy to say this smart contract doesn't have any loopholes, right? It is technically sound. And I, I, I would need someone of a who knows how to code smart contract platforms and blockchains um, to, to give me that data. So I agree with that. I agree with that. What we don't want though, like I said, is the overreach and the draconian, uh, you know, stupid laws. Uh, okay. So he says here, which in turn means that the Fed will not allow for anonymous uh, smart contracts. Someone will need to take responsibility or it will be deemed illegal, which may prevent uh, offshore contracts from being legal if they don't register. Proof of authorship and identity would be a thing. Tokenomics are confusing and are uh, a ripe opportunity for fraud. How treasury is used, how tokens are sold and distributed, what liquidity is put in place and what information is disclosed and how accurate is it? Like. Uh, smart contracts there are, will need to be a proof of authorship and identity. If you require proof of authorship for smart co smart contracts and tokenomics, and the feds and the feds and victims will have a person slash entity to sue or in in indict, uh, probably at the cost of anonymous innovators. But that's the price that will be paid. Uh, personally, I think a regulation built around existing fraud laws is not a bad thing. It will require proof of authorship and identi identity, but it won't hurt innovation nor slow anything down. It will open the door for more people to, co to confidently use crypto thoughts. So I like that he's kind of left it open-ended open to uh, be corrected. And I, I agree with some of this. Um, some of it is like, eh, I'm not sure, but I think he's on the right track, starting the dialogue. And that's what we need. We need to be having dialogue, discussing the pitfalls, the pros, the cons, and not be worried about Genster coming around, uh, trying to shake people down like the mafia. All right. Hedera Hashgraph, if you hold a Hedera, this is interesting. Hedera Governing Council approves $5 billion in HBAR tokens to boost network adoption. The newly established HBAR Foundation will receive $2.5 billion in tokens. Uh, in a press release shared with Coindesk Thursday, Hedera said that 5.4 billion tokens worth $2.5 billion would be allocated to the newly established HBAR Foundation. The remaining amount would go to other initiatives aimed at strengthening the development of, Hedera, of the Hedera ecosystem. Headed by software and M&A industry veteran Shane Higdon, the HBAR Foundation will be an independent organization with uh, autonomy in deploying the HBAR tokens it receives. The foundation aims to boost the Hedera, Hedera's network's adoption in decentralized finance, finance non-fungible tokens, uh, central bank digital currencies, hmm, interesting, gaming and other industries. I have HBAR in my, in my portfolio. Uh, when I saw who they were partnering with and working with, in their vision, I was like, all right, this is one I'm going to put a bet on. And the fact that they mentioned here CBDCs, I think there sounds like they're going to be working with some central banks around the world to build uh, the CBDCs on top of it. Very bullish. And uh, look, you know, sometimes we all get FOMO. It's like, oh man, I wish I had this token in my portfolio. Um, you don't want to just FOMO in, especially if something's pumping, wait for a correction. And look, and there's going to be stuff you're going to miss. Like I miss Solana. Do I wish I had bought? Of course. But, you know, I know there's other coins that I have that are going to pump and do well. So um, be patient, be smart. Don't don't put money in that you, you can afford to lose. And uh, like I said, be have a macro level uh, outlook. So, guys, what do you think about this news? Uh, for those of you who will participate in the XRP snapshot with Flare, are you excited to get your Songbird tokens? Let me know. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button, share this video. Don't forget to watch the interview with Gabor Gerbox, and I'll talk to you all later.